Hello, everybody. Welcome to New Earth Rising. We're so excited to be here. Sharon and I are here today. It is October 2022 already. OMG. <laughs> I cannot believe it's almost the end of this year. Time is so weird these days. It is so gosh darn weird. So anyways, I am Michelle Ambergy. I am the Awakener. I am one of many. And chances are, if you're being drawn to this show, you are too. Because we're all awakening. I, I kind of took on the moniker of the Awakener because I had this understanding that as as understanding that we're all one, that as I awaken, we're all awakening. So it's funny. I've had some people are like, oh, you're the awakener. You know, it's like, yeah, we're all the awakener. When I claim that, I claim that for all of us. And so as the awakener, here we are. And guess what? We're going to be talking about karma, which is part of that whole awakening thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad everybody is here, whether you're watching Oh, I would say whether you're watching live or watching recorded, <laughs> it's just recorded. Well, we're um, live now. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> and that's really all that matters because we're all one, right? So we're all here live. <laughs> it gets really twisty. <laughs> so it's so excited to be here, Sharon, as always, my co-shenanigator. It's always fun to be here with you. I love your background. Oh yeah, Michelle. I'm <laughs> really glad to be here again too. Isn't that cool? I was looking, we were talking earlier, I was looking for something that kind of uh, depicted the wheel of karma and um, it's uh, our topic today is how to step off the wheel of karma, the wheel of reincarnation, that type of thing. And we're just sharing what we understand with the, the information we've gotten from our higher guidance that type of thing and it's funny you, you call yourself the awakener michelle because when um i first start waking up <laughs> i realized that my birth date is i um the sign of i'm the sign of the rooster oh the chinese sign the chinese sign sorry yeah the chinese sign of the rooster um so i was born under the rooster who wakes you up yep in the morning very cool <laughs> Very cool. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I am an ox. Oh. So you wake everybody up and I just keep going one foot in front of the other. Keep at it. Perseverance. <laughs> and doesn't that, um, th that's a great segue for our topic of um, reincarnation and yes. Uh, yeah. And coming to this planet over and over and over again. Yeah, sometimes it's like, what the heck are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And if it's so hard, and can we even get off of this wheel of karma? You know, because when you think about it, this karmic thing has been going on for a long time. And depending on what teachings you, you know, are into, or if you're into all of them, like me, I like, I like read all of them. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you know, what, why the heck would we come here? Since we're free and sovereign souls. Why would we come here and be in this situation where we're trapped in this wheel of karma, right? Mm -hmm. What is, what's going on? Why would we do that? Are we really trapped when we die? Do we get off and then decide to come back in? There's so many questions. There's so many questions. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Because it's all about cycles, right? Right. It's all about cycles and circles. And one of the things that, that has haunted me is that whole thing it's like why are is there this karmic thing that we're stuck in who thought this crap up <laughs> and is it a matrix that we can collapse and get the heck out of mm -hmm. that's been something that i thought of and i don't know if this is why i keep coming back into this crazy third dimensional plane i don't know what that is but it's like who made this karmic thing up and 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 how do we get rid of it because it's stupid <laughs> you know it is it's like okay so i killed somebody in 1432 and am i still suffering the effects of that am i still on that karmic wheel of being punished or or is it something we do to ourselves? Or is it something God does to it? Or is it something the ETs are doing to us? And then my head starts going, oh, and I have to go, you know, watch Netflix. Because <laughs> <it's> so... <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? 
<laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's perfect because I was going to say, hey, let's talk about what we feel karma really is, right? Yeah. Because there's so many ideas about what it is, so many belief systems. And um, I feel what I've learned is that karma was the cause, um, cause and effect, right? Um, it doesn't mean, and I don't, and I, and this is just my opinion, as always, take Great. what resonates and just leave the thought. rest. Yeah, just our thought on it. And what I've learned, uh, remembered, and this to, and I believe that we remember things. We're here to uh, remember as well. Um, and and so I don't believe that we're punished. I believe that we make the choice to experience everything there is to experience in physicality, in physical form in the higher planes and uh, there is no good or bad there's experience right yeah That's right but we get stuck on this i'm sorry uh i was just gonna say we get stuck on this um dense in this dense frequency with guilt and uh shame and anger and these you know these uh emotions that are really heavy right and that's what can keep us stuck and when we when um and, and i've said this many times and michelle and i've talked about this time we used to live a lot longer the idea is to when we do a cho choose a negative life or you know a lower frequency type of experience is to is to uh, close that karmic loop within that lifetime yeah yeah and forgive it forgiveness is the be all to end all that's it and in one word, how to step off the wheel of karma or incarnation is to forgive everything. Yeah. And that, you know, and that starts with ourselves. Um, so, so we, what I understand is we, and this is what I was getting in my meditation this morning. Cause I was thinking about it. Like, you know, if we're really trapped here, how do we get out of this trap? And, and I know that we're moving into that time of where um, we're becoming untrapped <laughs> because we're becoming aware so when we do if we do when not if when we do die and we have things that um that we want to resolve that we didn't resolve in those that lifetime and michelle and i are past life therapists so we understand that then um, when we get away from this is what i understand when we get away from the earth plane perspective the ego's perspective of uh, I'm not going back here again. I'm not, I don't ever <laughs> want to go back there again. Oh, that was awful. Why did I have to suffer and do all that? And we forget about how um, difficult it can be here as we're looking at our life plan or, or going over our life. And then we sit there with our guides and we're at that level of, okay, you know what? I want to go back and, and see if, and try to work on balancing that karmic loop yeah. with whoever it is with whatever it is whether it be hurting someone and then um you know if we choose to be hurt by them then that's what we choose it's a choice or we can choose to um uh do something in another area with them and just to to forgive what happened like in my case with with my family member where i was able to forgive many 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 lifetimes of him killing me trying to kill me abusing me and and that which came it came forward into this lifetime which the soul chose to do so that i could step off that karmic um that imbalance mm -hmm. of of having that um in my soul memory that was so painful and so traumatic which is another one um that i wasn't able to able to even remember it yeah so, well and that's a big part of this whole yeah. thing is not remembering yes right it's like our the, the memory gets wiped out it, it would be a lot easier to move through this karmic thing and move out of this this density into a, a lighter density a higher dimension if we didn't forget but it's part of the program and mm -hmm. as free and sovereign beings we have free will so it is a choice to come into this dimension, into this density, and to continue to, to do this, right? You know, right. because we've got to 
it's like, okay, I chose this. So what are the lessons? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, like you're saying, is to forgive, is to move it all into love. You know, when you can forgive and let go and move back into the love frequency, that's the higher frequencies. That's when you start being able to expand out into the higher dimensions and stuff. But we get so stuck. And this, this dimension, this entire density we're in, this dimension that we're in, is so programmed with failure and anger and fear and yeah. division and, you know, all of that. But we are in an awakening and ascension cycle. And that cycle is kind of depicted by that totally awesome thing you have behind you. It's so cool is it's these wheels of time, right? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the clock of the universes are all lining up. Right. to where the passageway is open for our ascension. But if we're not learning and if we're not forgiving, if we're not letting go, if we're not moving into that love frequency, you know, we are possibility of getting stuck here again for another like 36,000 years. Right. And that terrifies me, yeah. but it's not like it's a window. It's not like it's October 1st through October 3rd, you know, like a lot of the portals <laughs> and all the different things that we work with. I mean, it's, it's like hundreds of years that we have that opportunity. Um, and I believe we're actually in it. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that we're actually totally. in that because I, I really feel like people are ascending. And I have a friend of mine that I'm pretty sure he ascended. He didn't ascend with his body, mm. but he was just like meditator and, and these advanced processes. And he went down to the beach, he was meditating and they found him like, I don't know, two days later, still sitting there looking completely alive in full meditation, full Samadhi. And, you know, they were like, Hey, Hey, Hey. And they took a little while to realize that he had passed, that he had crossed, but wow. he was in full and he used to get there, right? You could sit in a room with him and you would move into that state just being in the room with him. Mm. So we know that he's pretty advanced. Yay, Jeff. But, um, you know, it's it's there are people that are are moving through, but we have to do our part. Yeah. And that's part of what's so important too. And, and Sharon and I were talking about the importance of meditation the importance of turning in and listening to the inner world and not get caught up and distracted mm -hmm. by all the crazy crap that's going on out there. Cause that's what it's designed for. That's exactly mm -hmm. yeah. because we are in a matrix that is not necessarily uh, uh, filled with all people of love and light. Mm -hmm. you know i like to call them the dark overlords but there are beings that like to keep us here because we have yummy energy mm -hmm. because we are the children of god we do have that god spark that soul spark within us that is delicious to snack on <laughs> and if they can keep us here trapped here right and keep us in you know off balance keep us in that fear keep us in that that stress keep us in the energy we still have this beautiful god force energy but it it expands everything and it gets that fear energy going and then it's like oh aren't you a delicious one mm -hmm. and it's really interesting it's a little bit scary to think of it that way perhaps that's metaphoric perhaps that's exactly how it is but it's it's interesting to think of because what what is the purpose of it did we all buy into this karmic wheel matrix did we all go yeah we're going to agree to try that one that my belief is we kind of have to agree to it because we do have you know free will we yeah. are free and sovereign beings right. but we can also be manipulated and give our free will away without realizing it right right that's where yeah. psychopaths are so good <laughs> right. And it's my understanding that um, that's why the dark does exist because we have free will. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we were um, beings that didn't in a universe or in a, um, a space where free will was not part of who we were, it would all be love and light. Right. That, that would just be Right. The way it was, we didn't need anything else. We wouldn't have to worry about, you know, like the angelic realms and, you know, that right. type of type of it's realms. All good. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we agreed and I totally understand that we agreed, Hey, let's, let's drop down into duality and try this experiment and see how it is. And, or this, you know, this journey, whatever you want to call it, this voyage of stepping down and in the, you know, in the eternal, um, the eternal uh, journey of the soul, which is eternal, <laughs> this is just, uh, uh, you know, a little speck in time. A little it's blip. Just a, yeah, a little blip in time. Uh, each lifetime is. And um, and I'm glad you brought up cycles, Michelle, because I wanted to talk about cycles too, because that's what I believe is the end times is coming to the end of a 26,000 year cycle, right? I think it's 25,990 something your cycle and so we're at the end of that cycle and the universe and the galaxy has different cycles we just like we have yep. different cycles yep. and um the cosmos has um cycles so we're at the end of that and um and what are these called? the 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 yuga uh yuga um, yeah moving into the kali yuga the golden age okay. and my understanding and, and i think this was the mayan calendar depicted some of this too is we're not just the end of one cycle we're like the at the end of several cycles mm. that are all lining up. That's that. That, that makes line. sense. It's like all the like click, click, click. It's all lining up. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. That's why it's such a big deal. Yeah. And, um, and when, when I got in my meditation too, was uh, for people who um, have decided to, um, or aren't, um, aren't in that place of, of like you were talking about uh, stepping off the, this cycle this wheel of karma wheel of re reincarnation um it, it's not it, it's okay they just yeah. move into a different a, another 3d reality mm -hmm. where they play out right they're you know then they then they are um reincarnated in another twenty six thousand year cycle in 3d but there's so many of us here yeah. who have uh, chose to come here in this time during this um this particular time this particular yeah. time yeah on the planet uh to experience this to be present for this huge deal it's a huge deal and to hold some of these stargates open yeah. right yeah. you know to be able to, get, to hold that frequency up so m more as many people as possible can awaken and i'm sure every time this kind of lineup comes around this is what happens too you know because you know it there is this this part of this you know for us to be trapped here we had to have given our permission at some level or something but also we forget we get that whole forgetful thing and so there you know we do have many of us who understand who maybe have gotten off the wheel but who come down to help too right that's another aspect of this a lot of this what are called star seeds and matter of fact it's 444 here on the pacific coast right now <laughs> ooh, ooh. but right. what are called star seeds and stuff who have gotten off the wheel of karma ascended masters jesus right mm -hmm. being one mm -hmm. of them who have got off that wheel of karma but who decide to drop back down into this density to help Mm -hmm. Right. Because every 2000 years or so, there is another lineup that helps. And that's why Mr. J man came in carrying the the frequency of the Christos of the of the Christ to bring it in to hold that energy to help awaken people and to bring that love frequency onto the planet and for people to, you know, and people would feel it and they would love it and they wanted to be around him. But the secret is not to have it in an outside guru, not to have it from someone else, it's to find it within. Yeah. And that's what he told us. The kingdom of heaven is within, right? Right. And so that's a big part of the key is it's not out there. It's in here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, forgiveness also is um, mm -hmm. huge. And uh, I mean, the law of one, and I love this quote, my favorite quote from the law of one studies um, in forgiveness lies the stoppage of the wheel of karma. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm going to go back to, um, to the family member that, that was, um, you know, that was treating me badly as a child very badly as a child. And I, and that's what Yeshua, 
Yeshua taught me to do was to, what he worked with me on was to forgive or, or just look at it. He said, look at it, see if you can forgive it, whatever, just do it. Yep. And I did it over and over. And I'm sure I shared this here, but it's just, to me, it's just so profound on how it's not something that we um, have to forgive that person or forgive anything like that, that is against the grain for harming a child. Right. I realized after a few meditations, I felt so much unconditional love from my family members, higher self, higher, higher self and higher part of him that he and I, cause I saw a lifetime after lifetime where we had been doing this where, and I saw it just as plain as day where I asked him to come back with me and help me and finish it, yeah. help me close this loop help me in that way and he agreed to lower his frequency so low to be you know such a bad guy um and i realized you know there's nothing to forgive i felt this immense unconditional love for me mm -hmm. and um and me for him and which is you know it's not something that you can even that people can even fathom in this mm -hmm. 3d realm unless you are going within and right. what does it know thyself and know exactly see things from a much higher mm -hmm. perspective a much wider perspective right that i didn't have to forgive him <laughs> i didn't have to forgive him i just needed to understand what the heck was going on right and another way to look at that too is we are all one so he's yeah. another you mm -hmm. right so it's part of that whole thing is the forgiving yourself mm -hmm. in all aspects of yourself too. Oh yeah, but, all of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but it's all the same thing, right? I mean, that's what the thing where the, where the, the human mind is like, everything wants everything to be linear, but it's like what you're saying is right on, right? And that the, he's another you is all part of that whole package. Right. how it works and that is the awakening right when we begin to understand the different views then you understand and then you realize like you're saying there's nothing to forgive it's another you he was a wounded soul he was wounded hurt people hurt people right yeah and he was another you that was wounded and when we can forgive and send them love sometimes at first those like love 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 you know <laughs> But it's, we come to that point where that no longer holds power over us. We right. no longer hold that heavy energy. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the most profound thing for me from that was that seeing that we had chosen, and I saw the first lifetime that we had chosen together and I wasn't able to close that karmic loop and that we had chosen this together. And, you know, and he agreed to keep, um, lowering his frequency. And that's tough. I, I had the better end of the deal because he, um, he had to, uh, you know, agree to come down and be a bad person uh, or uh, do bad things um, as we see it. But then I, but then I realized when I broke through that barrier to that ceiling that I saw that, okay, now he can work on his soul growth right yeah and because i was keeping him trapped right it works we were keeping ways. yeah we were we were trapped in that cycle so when we're when um for for anyone watching here any of us um when we see that we're trapped in a cycle with someone that is um treating us badly or, we're or we just can't understand you know what the heck is going on and we have we can't we can't rise above it and see what the reason is why we chose this experience um we will repeat it yeah and not necessarily with the same person either mm -hmm. and one of the things too is you know, it's just shifting that perspective just a little bit, you know, with the work that, that you and you and I both do, right. You know, I know with, with me, I find people year after year after year come for reading and healing and coaching over the same issue, different people, different boss, different boyfriend, different girlfriend, 
you know, different situations, but it's the same thing over and over and over. And until they can get to the point where they recognize, A, they have some responsibility in that, it doesn't mean I'm responsible that that person punched me in the face, Mm -hmm. but it does mean there's something about this cycle that is drawing that to you. What is it? And a lot of time it's unforgiveness for self right and for the other and and a lot of people have such a hard time forgiving because they think they're saying well that's okay yes and that isn't what forgiving is saying at all it's releasing that energy to can continue to have hold over you and your life and them and their life right and i want to tell you unforgiveness isn't i forgive you and i hope your life is miserable that (laughs) does not count (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no that's not really forgiveness but um yeah <laughs> but you know you can fake it till you make it just yep, say it till you make it <laughs> fake it till you make it i love you i forgive you ho'oponopono that's what ho'oponopono is all about i love you i'm sorry please forgive me thank you i love you i'm sorry please forgive me thank you whatever or i forgive you thank you however you want to put it just fake it till you make it um and things start to become clearer And uh, also, I wanted to just touch on, you know, what's going on in the world now, because Mm. when I was um, Mm. had my near death experience in 2001, I saw so many, so much of what's happening now. And um, I didn't understand it back then. I do now. Yeah. 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 I saw the future. Uh, thank goodness the future has changed from what I saw because I did not see a good future back um, 20 something years ago for us. so, but looking at the people, uh, the beings, I don't know if we can call them human, but they look human, um, that uh, have um, done horrible, horrible things to humanity, to the children, um, you know, things like that. So we have to figure out where, where we want to be in that space with uncovering and bringing that to light. And that's a good, uh, a good vision right there is shining light on it. Light heals everything. Love heals everything. Yeah. So how are we going to handle that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I ourselves. Did, I did a, a a prayer with my meditation group that meets on Wednesdays, and we did kind of a prayer thing, not even too long ago. It's it's been in the last month or so, mm-hmm. and we did a prayer for love to fill and surround them that they might find the God within and return back to that spark of them that is pure, you know, that that pure intention that creation created them with and that the darkness that they've fallen into be filled with the light. Yeah. And, you know, and that is probably a, a first step is in offering them love. Mm -hmm. because again you know it all is stemming from pain and and you know inflicting pain to the level that is being inflicted on especially children and women right you know but it's it's everybody yeah I mean even just you know people starving to death and what's going on in the planet what's happening in Australia and China right now Mm -hmm. you know where people are are being brutalized by their government officials and the nonsense that's going on with all of this, you know, this isn't normal. None of it's normal for leaders of nations to be in the mindset that they are. And, you know, there's, it's almost like there's a group consciousness amongst them. Some might call it a demonic entity, you know, or something that's, that's following them, but whatever that is, it's still that hurt energy that needs to be filled with love and can you imagine if all of us who are hearing this would share with 10 people and say on this particular day we're just going to love these people we're going to send love out across the planet to all of these people that are hurting others in any way whatsoever and we've all done it so we're really sending it to all of us it would create a collective love bomb if you will to spread out across the planet how we could shift and change some things yeah you know let's do that now let's send a a love bomb (laughs) and we can we can do it right now yeah let's do that anyone watching will will add to the love bomb 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we can all just take a breath right now. Let's do it just right now and just take a moment and just, and just, first of all, let's just start moving our, our awareness into our hearts. Let's get into our own, our own love space, our own love party <laughs> in our hearts and just feel that love that's in there and just feel that beautiful white light of just pure love that's in there. It's the love of the Christ. It's the love of God. God is creator of angels, archangels, whatever your, whatever your love connection is. And then with that, you might even want to put your hands over your heart. Sometimes that brings your awareness deeper into that space, deeper into that love. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of visualize, maybe just visualize whatever this pall of darkness that runs through those that are hurting people. We're not even going to point out what it is, but you can see it almost like a layer of just blackness running through the minds of, of maybe even all of humanity. And we can just take that love that's in our hearts, allow it to rise out, out down our arms, out our palms, and just lift your palms up, palms facing outward, and just see beautiful white light and in the form of love just coming out and just pouring into that field of darkness. You see it's connected to all of everybody and, and, and really to all humanity and just moving in and just filling that entire field with just pure white light with love. We can just say, you know, we know that you are sacred and holy. We know that your original creation was created with the intention of love was created with the intention of love and we send you love until you can remember that you are love and we can just send that just wrapped in love filled with love that it moves through this field and just begin to see that field just beginning to getting lighter and lighter and then feel as this field filters into the minds of all who are tapped into this field and see them being freed from this energy field, freed from that dark field as it is filled with love, as it is filled with light. And just see all the people who have done you know, harm that have been hurtful. And again, we've all done it. Just see them waking up, see them all of a sudden like shaking their heads and opening their eyes as if they finally, their, their brain is clear again. Their mind is clear again. They can see truth and love and light again. And just see that energy just filtering into the minds. And, and as the mind awakens, as they begin to open that mind again, it begins to filter into their hearts, into their bodies, into their energy fields. And that they begin to radiate that pure, that pure love presence that they are. Because they are sacred and holy. Each and every one, all of creation is sacred and holy. And as this happens, we also just send thank you for the experience, as rough as it was. Thank you for holding that dark place that we might experience how dark it can be separated from God and that we can now, or God, God is creator, whatever your words are, um, and that we can now begin to go together <clears throat> where we go one, we go all, right? Mm -hmm. Where we can all now go together and get off this wheel of karma where we forgive each other, we forgive ourselves, we forgive this collective agreement called karma, that we forgive it all. And as we do that, that wheel, that construct, that paradigm of the karmic wheel begins to crumble and fall away. And we see the opening, we see that opening portal that is filled with light and filled with love that goes directly back into the heart of God. And we see that, all that darkness just dissolving. And we just see the, the Mother Earth filled with light, all of life on Mother Earth filled with light, filled with the love Ooh, that that light brings all minds, all minds, all hearts freed now from what was once that dark field, that dark field now transmuted, transformed, and transcended in that love that we send out releasing all of life. And it may even expand out to other planets or other spaces 
other universes. We just allow this to be wherever it needs to be, that all of creation is created in the spark, in that primal light field that is love. And we just allow that to expand all the way out. Ooh, and allowing us to all be able to be in that space for which we were created, which is peace and love and light and enjoyment. I invite everybody to take a nice deep breath, breathing in and just bring your hands back over your heart and just give yourself some love for this wonderful, powerful work that you've done. And just thanking yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, just say, I love you. And we are all forgiven. <laughs> we are all forgiven. And so it is. As it is spoken, it is done. Awesome. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice. Thank you, Thank mm -hmm. you Michelle. It's beautiful. You yeah. felt that. Yeah. And we can do that if everybody would do that every day. Yeah. Just be a little part that took all of five minutes. Yeah. And to begin to dissolve that field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have goosebumps up and down. <laughs> Front, back, side, to side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's what we can do. Each and every one of us can take yes. a step towards that. Yeah. 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 So to conclude stepping off the wheel of karma stepping off the wheel of reincarnation um what our topic is today number one forgiveness <laughs> right number one forgiveness and that's forgiving ourselves right mm -hmm. forgiving ourselves it starts with forgiving ourselves and, um, yeah. and, and in order to get into that space we have to go within yeah we have to have time spend time going within yeah. And if I would say, if, if anyone watching feels that they have something they need to work with, um, lack of self-love, um, lack of self-confidence, um, feeling shameful or guilt, anything like that, grief, anything like that, that is a lower frequency emotion. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a matter of just heavy We're, it's heavy right it's heavy mm -hmm. if we hold on to it i mean we go through it it's a process we go through it but as long as we go through it and don't shove it down don't say oh i don't want to deal with that or anything like that um it's going to come up and rear its ugly head in some way or project yeah. in some way because we are in the time of awakening that means being awake to who we are looking at it being awake and to who sometimes we are. it really is scary and it really is horribly, horribly painful, mm -hmm. you know, where we physically feel this emotional pain, but you don't have to do it alone either. And Sharon and I both are trained and skilled and certified and degreed <laughs> in processes and ways to help you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do this alone. And a lot of times the fear of facing it is much worse than actually facing it. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with and I've heard from friends, family, people that have fought their demons, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. For decades. And when they finally face it, matter of fact, I had someone not too long ago, finally just turned around and said, what do you want? What do you want? And the this thing that had been plaguing her and it was per something pretty serious, just was like, Oh, I just wanted you to look at me. Well, what, what, what do you want me to do about this? And she's like, oh, I'm so mad and so tired of running from you. It was like, oh, I'm good now. And it just like, and dissolved. It just wanted to be seen. That's it. Didn't need forgiveness. Didn't need healing. Now we did all that with it because she needed it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this, Thing, this image is feeling this energy, energy that takes yeah. on a life <clears throat> within us a lot of times just needs to be acknowledged yeah and once it is it's like oh okay i'm good you know it's like a, it's like a, a kid that misbehaves 
Sometimes right. they just want to be seen. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's really good work. And journaling is huge for that type mm -hmm. of work. Yeah. Yeah. And um, during my um, quickening 20 years ago, that was the first thing that my guides issue told me I need to do is to journal, journal everything that we work on together, um, what comes up, all that kind of thing. Because, because if you're not writing this down or getting it out, it, it kind of rehashes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and writing your dreams down too. Oh yeah, totally. Cause that's part of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's part of it. Yeah. I know I've been having crazy dreams lately. It's oh my gosh. I had a dream that King Kong came in my house, <laughs> went in and messed up my bathroom. Oh, whoa. I'm like, dude, wow. excuse where, me. Where did he come from? I don't know, but that was just weird. And he was breathing on me because I was laying really still. It's like, don't move, don't move, don't move. And he was breathing on me. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> Wow, that sounds like something that's uh, maybe a little bit overwhelming for you that was going on at that time that you're like, <laughs> it was King or deal Kong. dealing with. <laughs> when, yeah, when I think of King Kong, I, that's me. It's not my dream, but I think of something that's big and scary and um, something that's um, kind of, well, overwhelming. Well, how, how am I supposed to face this or take care of this? Yeah. 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 It's crazy. It's crazy. But it and it does, it shows up in all mm -hmm. these kind of different ways, right? Things that we're not dealing with. And we all do it all the time. That's the thing. It's not like Sharon and I aren't sitting here going, okay, we're all clean and pristine. No. We never <laughs> have these problems. No, no, no. 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 We still have a human life we're dealing with. Yeah. We still have King Kongs. <laughs> we still have King Kongs. <laughs> yeah totally that was playing with my curling iron too by the way was he curling his hair oh i don't know but it was broken on the floor uh, I, was it your cat that was um that you were seeing in your dream as king kong it could have been mikey <laughs> he rules your life he rules my life my little king kong yeah but it's but it is it's really really interesting how these things can give you a lot of insight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally. Because our dreams are um, the perfect place for us to, and I'm sure we've said this many times, uh, the perfect place for us to work out, work out our stuff. Yeah. Because during the day we're focused on, guess what? Work, uh, family, um, shopping, going to the store, cooking meals, doing all that kind of stuff that we need to, you know, make it through our day yeah and and um and if we and if we're not meditating but you everyone should be meditating meditating <laughs> yes <laughs> uh then our dream time even even if we do meditate our dream time is the place that the space yeah. where our higher self our guidance can use to help us heal and yeah you know michelle that nightmares are healing that's what Yeshua taught me. Ooh, Nightmares are. are healing dreams. It's holy moly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's yeah. finally this part, you know, quiets down a bit. So the subconscious where all the stuff is stuffed down into yeah. can come up. And I do want to, I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion right now. I recently started a Patreon site that is filled with meditations. Nice. And it's called Meditation Station for Elevation. Nice. So if anybody wants a wide array, I got 15 minute ones and I got one hour ones, a nice. whole bunch of them on there. And I also have some on my, um, getting some new ones up. I got mermaids and unicorns on my website at michelleamberie.com. Cool. Because it's something I'm really being called to do is get all different kinds of meditations out there and available to people um because it was funny a while ago because i've known for years how important meditation is and i tell all of my clients you know and i literally my clients i'll be like now are you doing the meditations They're like oh my god they like roll their eyes at me yeah but i've always known how important meditation is and so about a year ago i was like you know what if i could just pray and meditate every day i'd be so happy and about two months ago, I was like, well, why aren't you doing that? Why don't you? Right. Get <laughs> yeah. it out there. Get it for people. I went, oh, 
Oh my gosh. So I've been spending a lot of time on doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's for all of you guys, little fee to it. Cause I, I got to pay my rent too, but get that's okay yeah. over there and get some meditations and get some things. And one of the things that's cool is Patreon has a phone app. So you can take meditation station with you everywhere you go and meditate a little bit on your lunch break at work or meditate in the bathroom while you're crying. Like I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I kind of feel if I haven't, um, during my meditations, if I don't feel tears at one point or another, mm. and that's feeling the love that's coming in from my yeah. guidance, then, yeah. um, I haven't gone deep enough. <laughs> I have to got to feel it. I mean, sometimes my meditations are all about information, right? But, um, but just opening up to that space of pure love, pure light and love is um, amazing. And it, and it takes, it takes a little work if, uh, if you're not used to meditating and we should do a whole show on meditation. I still call it Mm -hmm. devotion time. It is reflection, devotion. devotion. And there's so many different ways to do it. You know, that's part of the reason I did what I did is like, yeah, there's breathing meditations there. I am, you know, there's repeating, there's guided, there's light, there's healing, there's, right. there's a million different ways to do it. And it all counts. It's all about going within, mm-hmm. just going within. Yeah. Just feeling that inner because as much as we feel like there's existence outside of us, it is within too. Mm-hmm. as far as it goes out there in your imagination it goes this far within too it's infinite within it's infinite mm-hmm. this is finite yeah and what, yeah what we're projecting this is finite what's within us is infinite who we are yeah is infinite <laughs> and <laughs> our eternal. soul our light and love that yeah. part of us light yeah and eternal infinite and finding that and connecting back to it and letting it be a part of your daily life really does shift a lot of the issues that people have. But the the hard thing is people have such a hard time getting started with it, right? right. And getting a program with it. And I fall off, mm-hmm. you know, I yeah. get to where it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't meditated in sometimes I'll go for a week you know, and things start getting a little wobbly. You feel the difference. I start getting cranky. <laughs> you know, people start being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the people out there start being stupid. They start misbehaving. I know, right? And it's like, whoop, 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 reel it in, reel it in. <laughs> it changes your perspective. It changes our perspective on everything. It really yeah, does. It's easy to get our attention and our energy hooked. Outside. It doesn't mean some people aren't stupid, but uh, well, no, they are. <laughs> but, but we're but all one, so I need to go talk to the stupid in me. That part of us that's <laughs> stupid, yeah, that part of us that we don't care for. You know, it's we like could Namaste we could stay stupidly. Stupid in me recognizes the stupid in you. <laughs> we're all one, and I love you too. <laughs> oh man oh that was good (laughs) (laughs) uh perfect i know right (laughs) but yeah you know that was not that was the first one of the first things also that yeshua taught me is to look at everyone as a part of me yeah as a part of me it's hard (laughs) Because there are stupid people. And to all the stupid people out there, I love you. You are divine too. But but no, seriously. But yes. It is. And it's just a projective of our, our, our projection of our own parts of us. Stupidity? Oh, no. Stupid. <laughs> the know? parts of us that, yeah, that are, you know, just in in, still in the ego. Still in the ego. Still in the ego. That are, yeah, in that space of, of letting the ego take over. Yeah. And that's okay. It's okay. However, recognizing it, awareness is always a key. Recognizing it is yeah. always a key. Everything's okay. Everything's yeah. okay. Yeah, it is because we're all, we're all learning and growing. Right. And again, as, as a body of one, you know, as a <laughs> right? body of one, it's all the different parts of us that are 
out there learning and growing in all these millions of different ways. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of cool. If you think of it that way as, as, um, you know, all these little me's out there. Like if you look at the world, you go to the grocery store and you look at every single person in their grocery store with all their weird little things that they're doing. And it's like, those are all me all doing their own little world in their own little way with their own little weirdnesses. And it's like, it's really a trip in the head. <laughs> yes. You look it at is. that. It's like, Ooh, that's a little me over there checking labels, you know, making <laughs> sure or smelling the fruit, you know, licking the fruit. <laughs> right. Oh, no. oh gosh. Oh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> stealing, stealing strawberries and grapes. Yeah. Off of the right, right. It's like, oh, you shouldn't be stealing. Oh, I do the grape thing every me. once in a while. Cause you know, I don't want to buy a bunch of grapes that don't taste good. Yeah. But, well, uh, we do have to try them. Yeah, we do. But all the different things and all the, you know, the person that cuts you off. Oh, there's me being in a hurry. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. I love you, me. I love, I you, love me. you. I love you, me. <laughs> You're being stupid. Don't get in a crash. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a song by Nine Inch Nails. I love Nine Inch Nails. Um, you know, Nine Inch Nails, of course. I'm I sure. do. I don't know their music that much, but oh. I know, I know who okay. they are uh he, uh Trent Reznor Trent Reznor yeah he's um he's the lead of Nine Inch Nails it's him and his, the song is called um well the lyrics are there is no there is there is no you there is only me yeah I just made you up to hurt myself <laughs> oh yeah whoa mm -hmm. yeah lyrics like that so I mean he's been aware for a long time I've seen him in concert like three times he's amazing Wow. Amazing stuff. But uh, yeah. That, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. And Look it's all, all part of this karmic thing that we're on. Mm -hmm. You know, if we put it in a perspective of like what you just said, there is no you, there's only me. And I made you up oh, just to hurt myself. And then this karmic thing, it's like, well, I made that up to hurt myself too. Yeah. Right. Or to teach myself or to awaken myself or to have that experience. Right. To have that experience. Yeah. And to wake up. We uh, we've and that's another thing I've um, known is that we live our, we leave ourselves breadcrumbs. Our higher self yeah. leaves us breadcrumbs in every lifetime. Yeah. Opportunities for for growth and to recognize things and to uh, help yeah. us become aware and uh, triggers yeah. along the way. And good and bad, you know, little things like, like, oh my gosh, what, what, there was something that I was just doing. The smell of horses. You know, when I was a little girl, I remember, I don't being somewhere and the smell of horses. Oh my God. And I just went off running. It was like, ah, Shelly, Shelly, where's Shelly going? You know, and it's this farm and there's animals and there's knives and sharp tools and giant animals everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like beelining it for the horses or little things, you know, where certain colors or certain smells or certain feeling or certain people or that or deja vu, mm -hmm. you know, where all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what was that? I've, I've done this, this move before I've been here before. Right. They're all parts of those breadcrumbs. So the horse smell was a past life, another lifetime. It was throughout lifetimes, but it was okay. love. Yeah, it was totally. the smell of love. It still is the smell of love. And if someone would make the smell of horse perfume, I'd wear it. <laughs> <laughs> make it. <laughs> that's one of those scents that I'm not sure what <laughs> would sell. But, Probably wouldn't make a lot of money off it, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah, there's a lot of cowboys out there, a lot of cowgirls. Yep, we'll <laughs> just call it the smell of horse by Dior. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. you heard it here first, folks. That's right, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all those little things, everything matters too. That's that's part of it. A lot of times we, we ignore the, the little messages. Yeah. The little whispers. 
our little triggers things yeah yeah that's what they are our, our higher self is constantly communicating with us constantly that's how we get our inspirations it's how we we um we uh yeah inspirations connections things you know recognize people recognize situations things like that our, our higher self is constantly communicating with communicating with this yeah. and um when we when we begin to discern between the ego and our higher self is when we're on our way yeah yeah when we're when we're clear and we're it was there. it was interesting i was just thinking you know, like when I first met you, I was like, oh my God, I love her. You know, it was like that instant, like, oh yeah. Same here. But, yeah. But we also have that feeling sometimes that, oh my God, I love him. Mm -hmm. It's a soulmate, you know, but a lot of times we'll ignore all those red flags <laughs> yeah. where it's like, yeah, it's a soulmate and you're supposed to stay away. <laughs> it's like, yes, you recognize them because you're supposed to run, right? <laughs> Or forgive whatever it was that that brought you to after you run, together again. After you run. <laughs> look at it from a, uh, a, a different a distance. Yeah, seven hundred miles away. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's it's recognizing that, and I can't tell you how many, you know, re, little the little short relationships are like kind of just feel like I know them mm -hmm. so cool it's like red flag red flag but, yeah but they're but they're so special I know them right <laughs> yeah you know it's like we're oh, soulmates we're soulmates. soulmates for two months I'm in love bam oh crap I should have paid attention <laughs> six weeks ago when they like, know, didn't right? show up for a date and they told me a lie and their girlfriend you know was stalking them when we went on a date you know? <laughs> Red Sounds flag. like you're speaking from experience, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, never, never. but, you know, soulmates are, we also come together with soulmates to help us, uh, move through things, to teach each other yes. and get through things. You know, that's yeah. what soulmates are too. Absolutely. And that's sometimes why we can feel that intensity. Um, it doesn't mean that we're meant to be together forever and ever. Yeah. And a lot of people hope for the soulmate thing, thinking it is the forever and ever and yeah. all of the pain and all of the struggles of of love and relationship are gone and that's rarely it that's a it's a rare thing yeah. when people find it but it does happen sure you know i yeah, know the two twin couples. flame thing or whatever yeah. yeah and even the twin flame thing is still can be problems oh yeah i mean it's more intense human. yeah yeah it's a lot more intense than the soulmate thing yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and i i only know two people who are married, who have learned to work together and be together and have a, a truly harmonious relationship. Do they have problems? Yes, but they work it. And a lot of times that is just emotional and mental maturity right? more than anything else too. And that's part of what these soulmate relationships are is to help us grow up. Yeah. To learn to be compassionate, forgiving, kind. Yeah. Or to recognize abuse and get the heck out. Right. You know? And another part of that growing up is spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Good stuff. That's when you whip out the hoodoo. That's spiritual maturity. <laughs> the I <hoodoo>? have newt. <laughs> Frog's legs. No, no, I'm kidding. Just That's in time for it. Halloween. Sawin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> that is not spiritual maturity by the way people casting spells and doing that crap is not spiritual maturity no huh? no <laughs> it was fun when it when we did it but you know how many lifetimes ago but uh or maybe some in this but um nah <laughs> not like that but <laughs> we don't use animal parts anymore oh no huh? not anymore yeah the newts just got pissed and they're like leave us alone <laughs> We're taking our eyes. I'm actually doing. If anyone's watching this in the Portland area or Beaverton area, I'm doing a a, a circle on oh, Halloween yeah. spirit circle. We're going to be doing some table tipping and ooh, 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 spirit ooh, 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 box and mediumship and that kind of thing. So that'll be fun. I I have to do. I always do something on Halloween. I'm such a chicken. 
Really? I'm like, I put my fairy costume on and I give candy to the kids. <laughs> That's as Halloween as I get because I'm a chicken. Oh, well, I usually <laughs> have a, I usually have a um, costume party. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, ha I have had one almost every year except 2020. 2020, 2020 is the first year I didn't have one. Yeah. The only year for as long as I've been here, 15 years or more. Yeah, um, I used to too, but you know, it's interesting. I had a thought, you know, things are open up. I could have a party this year. And I kind of went, God, it's so much work. Yeah, I know. That's yeah, what I was no, going, Maybe next year. Yeah. It's fun though. That's why I decided to do the table tipping and everything. I mean, people can come in costume if they want for sure. Um, so if you're in the area, it'll be fun. It's in Beaverton. Yeah. That'd or, be go to my website. Fun. Super fun. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Love it. I love it. Table plus, tipping is awesome. plus I have a channeling course coming up. Automatic writing mm -hmm. channeling course. October is a three day course, October 25th through the 27th. And I have and a mediumship development class Ooh. coming up October 15th and 22nd while we're nice. talking. There so you go. This whole, between Sharon and I, this whole month is all about spirit and communicating with ancestors and spirit. I also have a, a spirit circle on, uh, 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 on the 13th, <laughs> I think, the 13th. So, yeah, cool. we both have a lot. That's so cool. Yeah. We will get is. your spirit the spirit on <laughs> your spirit on and you could actually come to my mediumship courses and then you'll be all primed and ready to go for sharon's table tipping on halloween and for the channeling and for the channeling yeah channeling course <laughs> i know right oh table tipping is so much fun we've actually made that. the tipple the table fly wow fly we still have our fingers on it but it actually lifts up off the ground yeah i've had that happen too it's amazing it's so much yeah. fun it was pretty cool it was up you know it was probably up i mean people going it was foot off the ground i don't think it was that far but it was up but it, we had one person in there that all of a sudden realized and it freaked her out and she screamed and it slammed back down oh wow <laughs> <laughs> the table tipping is really powerful it is you know well it's just it's you know it's kind of like using a, a spirit board you're mm -hmm. just using a yep. table yep and you can ask questions and things like that and it'll answer yes and no you know we we do that and um james gilliland from the east city ranch uses table a table and tips oh wow yeah he um he tips and asks questions that's how he uses um he uses that to uh, to get him to check in with spirit on things. Wow. Yeah. He has a, uh, the female and the masculine, the feminine and the masculine on each side of the table. And he does it in, in the groups when we're there, um, when groups come during. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And now is he communicating with what we consider to be spirit or is he working with ETs or is it all the above? Whoever shows up. He oh, has wow. high, you know, obviously um, he has Syrian lion beans there. He has the Marys. He has, um, um, you know, Shua, uh, Babaji. Uh, so oh, lots and Babaji. lots. Yeah, lots and lots of beans that come and groups of beans. Um, the the um, elves, elvins, the elves that actually. My people. Yeah, they actually uh, work on they control the gate in Mount Adams. They open and close it when the ships come in and you can see it. You can see oh, it. Wow. Yeah. They, um, so they, according to him that they control the, um, the gates. Wow. Yeah. It makes sense that the elven realms would do that because they're very responsible. <laughs> well, of course, Lord of the Rings, you know, shows them that way mm -hmm. that's the way they I are. love them mm -hmm. i remember I, I watched that movie i had read the books and was in love with the elves but when i saw the movie and the way the elves were depicted yeah i was just like oh i was in heaven i'll just put the movie on just watch the, the elf parts <laughs> oh i watch aragorn <laughs> oh, I know. well and him too because he's just dang sexy 
Uh, yeah. Dixie. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Alrighty. This was such a good show, you guys. Mm-hmm. And important stuff. Seriously, if you're not meditating and it, you don't have to do it for hours, do 15 mm-hmm. minutes a day, mm-hmm. you know, and just move in, do some breathing, get a guided meditation, you know, listen to some beautiful music and just let give your mind a rest, give your body a rest for a little bit. It's a million different ways to do it, but please start because we are in this time of so much turmoil and so much just crazy going on. And there's so much energy moving through the airwaves and giving yourself a break will do wonders for your everything, my body and soul. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And thank you for that meditation, Michelle. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I, we would love to hear back of what you guys experienced when you do that meditation and please feel free to use that meditation over and over, do it every day. That'd be a great thing to do every day. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't know where to start with meditation, wow, what a great way to start, but let us know. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to, to, ding the bell down there so that you get notified when we're coming on mm-hmm. and we have our live show is the fourth thursday of every month two but weeks. we record in two weeks yep and we record one every week and so it comes up usually sharon used to be really good about getting it out on thursdays but i got in charge of that a couple of times and it came out like saturday <laughs> so you can tell who's in charge if it doesn't come out right away, it's me. Well, I was late last week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, were you? <laughs> yeah. You're so good about doing it. I get done and I'm like, I'm wiped out, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we have stuff coming out every week and you guys get notified what's going on. Our live shows are always super fun. We do Q&A. We will take your questions and stuff too. Yeah. So come on down, tell your friends about us. Also, if if anyone wants... To, um to to give us any suggestions on on a discussion Mm -hmm. we'd be happy to uh you know to talk about whatever you want to talk about or Mm. you know and find find some kind of a topic that um, we haven't talked about yet yeah we always do that and and we do do interviews as well yes got some interviews coming up and you know if any of you have interesting people you would love to have on the show or if Mm -hmm. you yourself you know, have something you'd like to share or yes. something, you know, give us a ring, you know, contact us and let's chat, see what you got. Because another thing, you know, with all this stuff is there's so many people out there with these gifts and so much love that have been kind of hiding in the shadows and it's time to come out. We need to see you. People need to hear from you and see you and know you. Yeah. You know, because you're a beautiful soul and it's time. Yeah. Time. And just remember, we got this. We got this. Do, we do, got do, this. Do. I don't know how those two go together, but it seems right. Yes. Da, 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 ch, ch, da, da, ch, ch, da, da. We got this. Yes. Oh, yeah. We got this. That's right. Uh, MC Hammer. Oh, MC Hammer. Right. Yeah. But we have, we do. Sorry, we MC this. Hammer. I stole your song. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> I'm sure he's okay with it. <laughs> All righty. All right. Thank you, everybody. Mwah. See you next yes. time. Mwah. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Bye-bye.